All right, party people, welcome back to day two of the Course Creators Challenge live here on Ye Oldy Facebook. Hey, uh, if this is working and you can see me and hear me, just give me a heads up by letting me know the country you are from in the comments. Let me know which country you are tuning in from in the comments so that I can get an affirmative that it's all working. And a little bit of housekeeping. If you would like me to bring your name and your mugshot, otherwise known as your picture or your avatar, up on the screen, then please uh, give StreamYard permission for me to do that, right? Because um, uh, I need you to give StreamYard explicit permission so that I can use your name and your photo uh, in the group here. Let me just be back in two seconds while I shut this door. Hang on a sec. And uh, then I can bring your name and your picture up on the screen. Like Max Jeffcott from Australia. G'day, mate. How are you? It's been a long time. We're working from home now. We don't get to see each other. Warren Denley is here from Melbourne, Australia. Very good. Keith Eldridge is here from Japan. Hey, Keith. Keith had a huge win recently. Just a little bit of context here. Yesterday I was talking about the fact that as a course creator, you never get tired of the gratitude you get from your students. Well, Keith just dropped a massive win in one of our groups. Keith is a student of a couple of my courses, and he dropped a massive win in one of our Facebook groups. Uh, I wake, I woke up. In fact, I think it might have even been yesterday that I saw it. I woke up this morning and just had a look through the groups and was reminded of the win. And I got to tell you, it's the reason that I get out of bed at four o'clock in the morning, some mornings like I did this morning, to get up and learn stuff to sharpen my saw and make me a better course creator so that I can continue to serve people like Keith because the feedback we get is just unbelievable. So, uh, Keith, thank you for sharing, my friend. Angie Neal is here from Australia. Angie, 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 you absolute rock star. For those who haven't seen, let me just quickly share my screen and show you what Angie's been up to overnight. Here we go. Let's just share this baby here. Check this out. Angie Neal uh, was on the call yesterday, followed along, did the homework. This is what happened. So I'm blown away, excited, terrified, and pumped. My own group, I get crickets, but was then invited by a friend to share with her group, and boom, these design guys want to know more about SEO. Tradies don't care. What have we learned there, Angie? And more importantly, I think we have validation done. Over 20 interested peeps. There we go. 25 comments. Uh, Angie taking massive action and uh, validating her idea and learning a bunch in the process. So, Angie Neal, you are a rock star. Alison Hartman is here from Australia. Yogesh is here from India, who also got uh, half a dozen replies to his email that he sent out yesterday using the framework that he learned. Jay Sant is here from the USA. Hey, Jay, full disclosure, Jay is one of our Mavericks Club members and is here hanging out to see how we do what we do. Uh, who else have we got here? Robert Mecklen is here from Virginia. Beth Lyles Livingston is here from North Carolina. Amy Hall is here from San Diego. Again, just rubbing it in that she's loving it up in uh, in sunny Southern California. Just can't imagine when I'm going to get back out to San Diego. Amy, it's killing me. I love San Diego. I miss San Diego. All right. So, and Kaz Walter is here. Says, morning. Hey, Kaz. And Paulina Harpy is here from Vanuatu. Hey, Paulina. Uh, beautiful. Uh, cool, cool, cool. And Nick Chapman is here from Thailand. Hey, Nick. Buddy, buddy, buddy. You're back in Thailand, mate. How are you? Good to see you. Um, all right. Uh, James Tyrone says, i got three so far, but I only tweeted 20 minutes ago. Oh, is it Tryon or Tyrone? James Tryon. James Tryon. There we go. Do apologize. Uh, Nick Cree, i got one reply. So back to the drawing board to refine my idea. Exactly. What have we learned? Well, we didn't waste a bunch of time creating a course that nobody wants. Excellent. So just a little bit of a recap. Yesterday, oh, by the way, uh, before we get there, I just, I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited about this. I can barely contain myself because, of course, this week we are giving away an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil 
to the most engaged course creator for the week. We're giving away an Apple iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil so that you can draw on your iPad because we just love doing that so much. Uh, our Kelvin. Kelvin has just shared this. Uh, not sure if you guys saw, but I got 15 leads. Kelvin, dude, where did you share that? Did you share that in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group? Come on, Kelvin. I need, here we go. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. I have to share my screen. This is just amazing. Here we go. Kelvin, you're a rock star. Where are we? How do I share my screen? Here we go. Here we go. I'm taking you inside my Facebook. This could get scary. Got five more since editing this screenshot last night. Wow. PM sent. I'm in. About to graduate later this year. I'm able to do this course. Yep, sweet. I'll be in touch shortly. I'm in. I'm in. I'm interested. Unbelievable. Fantastic. Kelvin, you're an absolute rock star. There we go. That's how it works. <laughs> love it. Love it. All right. So just to recap, yesterday, uh, Warren Denley only got two replies. Now, he, this is interesting, Warren. Let me just bring this up. I got your email, Warren. I got your email yesterday, and I'm like, that's interesting. I haven't got an email for you from you in months. And I got this email yesterday, and I went, I wonder how that's going to go. I only got two replies. Not surprising, given I haven't posted or emailed in months. Back to the drawing board and time to get some consistent content up. What have we learned? What have we learned? You need to keep your audience warm. It doesn't matter where your audience are. If they're in a Facebook group or email or LinkedIn, you need to keep those relationships warm. Excellent work though, Warren. You took action. You sent the email. You got two replies, okay? Amy Hall, I got 17, 16 from my email list alone, and I sent it at 9 a.m. Monday. I mean, you're just making my job too easy, kids. This is just unbelievable. This is like taking candy from a baby, uh, which if you've ever tried is actually quite easy. Um, this is awesome. So let me just recap what we talked about yesterday. What we talked about yesterday was uh, the unique value proposition for your course. And I gave you some homework for those of you who missed it. I'm just going to share my screen again here. And I will, I wonder if I can change the, no, I can't really do that. So let me do this instead. I'll share this bit of the screen and I'll go, here we go. All right, here is the homework. Uh, the homework was to take one of these example posts and either share it on social media or share it via email and to see what kind of response you got, if any. And the whole point of this is to test whether or not we have a message that resonates with the market before we go build a course that nobody wants. And of course, I told you the um, horror story, which I'll, I'll recap in a moment, of uh, the course that uh, we built that nobody bought. Well, in fact, five people bought it. So this is great to see so many people taking action and getting results. This is awesome source indeed. Um, today, we're going to dive into the workbook. For those of you who haven't got the workbook, what you need to do is make sure you are following this on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash WP Elevation. And let me just do this here. Here we go. Here are the instructions. Uh, visit the Course Creators Challenge on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash WP Elevation and leave a comment with the word workbook to get your free workbook template via Messenger. Because super important you do this because I'm going to show you how to use the workbook today on today's call and I'm going to show you how to use that workbook as the sales and marketing engine for your course, okay? Before I do that, I just want to recap the agenda for uh, this week. Of course, yesterday we talked about your unique value proposition, gave you some homework and you guys have taken action, which has been awesome. Today, we're talking about how to create the ultimate workbook and use it as the sales and marketing engine for your online course. Tomorrow, we've got a case study on how to use online courses to build your tribe and create an amazing lifestyle with my good friend, Dana Molstaff from Southern California. She is down in Amy Hall's uh, neck of the woods down in San Diego way. She's built an amazing business at Boss Mom, uh, where she basically helps mums uh, create their side hustle. And she's done that through online courses and a membership. 
And uh, Thursday, we're going to be talking to the one and only Dave Foy, who is one of the course creators here at WP Elevation, how to use your expertise to create and launch multiple online courses. And this is going to be really interesting because you could argue that a lot of what Dave teaches is just available on YouTube. So how has he navigated that? I would suggest that you guys get your pens and paper ready and, and write down any questions you've got about creating and selling online courses because seriously, between myself, Dave, and Dana, there's not much we don't know. Like we've figured a lot of this stuff out. We've all been doing it a long time. So it's a great opportunity to ask questions of those guys and get access to them. They've agreed to volunteer and give up their time to come help us all, which is super generous of them. That is, of course, on uh, Wednesday afternoon Pacific time, which is Thursday here in Australia. Friday here in Australia or Thursday afternoon Pacific time, we're going to reveal the complete course creator's blueprint and how you can use it to launch your first or next course and give you your next steps and show you how you can continue to work with us to get it done. Uh, so yesterday, again, just to recap, the UVP that we went through was read this if you want to achieve benefit without headache. Yeah. Read this if you want to achieve whatever without objection. And you guys have been posting that in groups and getting some awesome uh, feedback already, which has been excellent. I'm just having a look through some of the comments here. Uh, do, 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 do. Alison Hartman says, yes, cold audience is my problem. I'm working on it. Exactly. There we go. Uh, Nick Chapman says, my course is very niche and I'm perfectly placed to be delivering it. I have lots of interest already signed up. Awesome. Well done. Okay. Sheila, let's unpack this for a second. I posted about generating leads on Facebook, personal, business, LinkedIn, and Instagram, and sent out an email, zero bytes. I guess no one needs leads. Everyone needs leads. Or maybe I need to get new clients. It depends on your audience. It depends on the message that you sent. It depends on uh, why those people have either opted into your email address or uh, why they're following you on social media. So a lot of it depends on, so that the, the holy trinity is this, it's got to be the right message to the right market at the right time, yeah? So one of those things is missing. It's either not the right message. Also, let me just say this, the whole learn how to get leads off social media, that message has been done to death. I wouldn't start with that message. Even if that's what they need, I wouldn't start with that message because it's people are just so exhausted by that message because everyone's 16 year old cousin Billy is selling a course on how to get leads from social media, right? So I would just craft a different message. Yeah. Uh, Jay Sant is one of our Mavericks. I got six interested, not 10, but not nothing. There we go. That's a true story. It's not nothing. Uh, Angie Neal says, I've done all their courses. So awesome. I think she's referring to Dana and Dave and myself. So there you go. All right, beautiful. Uh, the, the next part of this puzzle is the workbook. So, uh, do, 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 do. oh yeah, we did that one. So make sure you leave the word workbook in the comments on our Facebook page and you'll get the workbook delivered to you via messenger. I'm going to show you how to use that in just a moment. You, it doesn't work in the group. If you leave the comment workbook in this in the in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group, if you're watching this in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group and you leave the comment in the group, the messenger bot doesn't work because we can't scrape comments out of a group because of, you know, people and their needs for privacy and all that stuff. All right. Uh, also, just to recap, <clears throat> because what I do know is that the further we get into this week, the the more challenging it is going to be for you to stay focused and to stay engaged, right? Because you're going to get distracted. Your emotional commitment is going to start to wane. It's a bit like a relationship. It's all very well and good for the first three months or six months or three years if you're really lucky. And then it just can't, you just kind of lose a little bit of, you know, maybe. I didn't. We're married with two beautiful children, so fortunately for me. But you know what I'm saying? Like the honeymoon period doesn't last forever. And particularly with something like this online, the honeymoon period lasts like about three seconds and then you move on. So I'm just going to remind you of why this is something you should be paying attention to. The online education industry will be a $325 billion industry by the year 2025. 
Online courses are infinitely scalable as a business model. And it is more than ever, the gratitude you get from students is addictive. I absolutely believe that now is the perfect time to be creating online courses. Uh, some of the people doing really well in this space, Marie Forleo, of course, from B-School, Amy Porterfield from uh, Online Marketing Podcast, Online Marketing Made Easy, uh, Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income Podcast, uh, Dana Mallstaff, she's going to hate me for using that photo. I can't wait uh, to have her on tomorrow. Brennan Bouchard, first course I ever bought on Limes, $2,000, best investment ever made was from that man. Dave Foy, one of our teachers here at WP Elevation, doing very well from online courses. Kim Barrett, the Facebook Ads Accelerator course, uh, doing very well from online courses. And, of course, Christina Romero, who started here at WP Elevation and now recently just sold her agency so that she can focus full-time on her online course and uh, membership platform, WP Care Market. So uh, a lot of people there, Marie Folio and Amy Porterfield, I think I mentioned yesterday, both doing over 10 figures a year. Over 10, it's mind-boggling, isn't it? Over 10 figures a year in revenue, primarily through online courses. So it's a huge opportunity. Now, I think more than ever, like internet usage is up by over 70% because of the pandemic. People are online looking for new skills, new advice, ad costs have plummeted. I'll talk about that in a second. And people are looking for someone to come along with a plan and something positive for them to focus on to give them something to focus on. And, and this is you and your online course. People are desperately looking for something positive to focus on and some activities to get stuck into. I don't want to bore you with too many details, but we will play some funky, funky tunes while we uh, talk about my first course that was an epic failure. There's the worksheet. It was under the brand Fuel HQ. We put together this course. We spent a full weekend in the studio making all the videos and a couple of weeks editing, editing it all together. And we started a Facebook group and we hit the launch uh, sequence button and we waited for the emails to go out. And after seven painful days, we sold five copies of our first online course in 2012, which was absolutely devastating. So much so that it took me over three years, three and a half years to make my next online course. That's how much it damaged my confidence. So I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I made. And that's why we're here this week to help you. And in fact, Angie Neal, I can promise you, I've just saved you and uh, 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 Kelvin, anyone here who has got leads and got bites, I've just saved you months and tens of thousands of dollars in wasted effort, time, blood, sweat, and tears because you're now not going to build something unless you know that people want to buy it. Let me talk about ad costs before I dive into the workbook and show you how to use it. The reason I mention that ad costs have plummeted is because, not that I'm suggesting that you run ads uh, right now because I don't think you should spend money unnecessarily. And I'll talk about I'll talk about where Facebook ads uh, are really useful in a moment. There's two places where Facebook ads are really useful. But the reason I'm mentioning that ad costs are down is because a lot of businesses have hit the wall or they've just pulled out of their marketing spend. So not only so ad costs being down, even in the year of an election at where ad costs usually skyrocket, ad costs are still down because there's more inventory in the ad platform available. So therefore supply and demand would dictate that the ad costs come down because it's all based on an auction system, right? So there's the less inventory available, the higher the price, the more inventory available, the cheaper the price. That's the way that basic kind of supply and demand economics works. And that's an indicator, not only that it is, not only that ad costs are down, but that is a barometer by which you measure the kind of marketing activities that are happening online. So the point I'm trying to make is that there's a captive audience online now because everyone's at, everyone's either in lockdown or they're at home or they've lost their job or they've or they've decided they don't want to go back to the job they had and they're looking for new skills and they're online consuming content. Not only that, but it's less competitive now than it has been in a long time and that's indicated by the fact that ad costs are plummeting. Now, where ads are really useful, where Facebook ads are really useful, I think I mentioned this yesterday, on the front end, Facebook ads are really good as a, as a verification tool. So you could take the framework I taught you yesterday, and in fact, I've done this myself, and just run a very basic Facebook lead form, lead ad, to validate the message. Read this if you want to, blah, without blah. Can you get leads from Facebook for, you know, 2 or $3 a lead? If you can, maybe we're onto something. 
You don't have to build anything. Don't have to do anything. You just capture the lead and you could just not do anything with them if you wanted to, or you could just send them a free report or a PDF or whatever. It doesn't matter. Or you could just get them on a call and ask them what their problem is. Um, so it's so Facebook's a really fast, cheap way to validate an idea. And then on the back end, once you've actually proven that you've got something that works, Facebook is a great amplifier, really good at being able to scale something that you've already proven works uh, through organic traffic. But let me say this and let me be super clear about this. Please do not pin your hopes on launching your first or next course on successfully running Facebook ads to make payday. It is a big, big mistake that a lot of people make. And I know people who make, I know people who might make, you know, $10 million a year in Facebook ad, in 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 retail in sales, but they'll spend two and a half, three million dollars a year on Facebook ads. And that's what you don't hear. You don't hear that stuff. They don't talk about how much they spend on Facebook ads. So you know, running running ads to sell your course is an amplification thing. Like, don't don't go. Well, I've got the, uh, what a lot of people do is go, I've got this great course now. We've got this great sales page. We've paid four thousand dollars for a copywriter to write the copy in our sales page, and now we're going to just put ten grand into Facebook ads. Please, God, don't do that. That is the quickest way to lose money. If you want to do that, just take that money, put it in an envelope, and address it to Troy Dean, care of WP Elevation at 231 Chapel Street, Pran 3181. That's 231 Chapel Street, Pran 3181. And all that money that you were going to spend on Facebook ads, put it in an envelope and send it to me, please. Okay? I'm not going to give it back to you and I'm not going to run ads for you, but I'll feel better about it. And you hopefully will feel better about it because it'll be going to a good cause, not Zuckerberg. Right. So let's dive into this. Uh, Adam Roma says the audio is cutting out for anyone else. Is the audio cutting out for anyone else? It's all good at my end, but then it should be. <laughs> uh, wow. Check this out. Sheila Heard, crazy. I just got a hit. I'm in. Oh gosh, definitely interested in hearing more. Sounds crazy, but we are booked solid through next year. So I'm being careful trying to get more leads. There you go. Okay. Angie says the audio is all good here. Okay, excellent. Uh, comments are moving very quickly. All right, let's dive in and uh, start on this. Here's the thing. Here's what I want you to think about now. I hope you've got your pens and your notebook ready because we're going to start doing some work, all right? Oh, I'm so excited about this. Here's what we need to think about. What is the quickest win you can give your students in your course? What is the quickest win? What's the action step they need to take to get the quick win? And then how would you document the action step for them to follow? All right, let's unpack that for a second. What is the quickest win you can give somebody in your online course? How's the sun coming in through that window? Just completely blowing out that side of the, uh, the, the room, isn't it? Sorry, I can't do anything about that, kids. Um, what is the quickest win you can give your students in your course? Let's just reflect on this for a moment. Yesterday, this isn't even a course. This is a challenge leading up to a course, right? Uh, I gave you guys a quick win. I gave you a framework. I, I taught you how to craft your UVP. I gave you a framework, told you to go post it. A bunch of you have posted it and a bunch of you have got leads. That's a quick win, right? So that's the quickest win that I could give you. That's why we did it yesterday. The next biggest win I can give you is teaching you how to design world-class workbooks and how to use those workbooks to generate leads and make sales, which I'm going to talk to you about today. So what's the quickest win, the quickest win, not the biggest win, not the most impactful thing? What is the quickest win you can give your students in their course? All right. Samir Shah says, got one sold. Get out of town, brother. Give us some more details. Give us more details. I want details. Um, what is the quickest win? Angie Neal says this. Claim their Google My Business page. That is the quickest win she can give them in their course. Fantastic. How to claim their Google My Business page, right? Which if you don't know, if you if you actually own a business and it has an actual address, you should have a Google My Business page because it definitely helps in search results because anyone searching for your type of thing, if your Google My Business page is, is optimized, then you'll just come up in the map search results, right? It's the quickest way to get on a page when a Google. So Angie's saying, 
teach them how to claim their Google My Business page. Second part to this is what, what action steps do they need to take in order to do that? So for me, it was, well, I need you to write out your UVP and post it somewhere to get some feedback, right? That's that's that, that that's the action step. So what is the action step, Angie? How do they claim their Google My Business page? How do you how, how do they do that, right? You need to think about the action steps they need to take to do that. And then how do we document that? Well, in my world, what I did was I did this. I said, "Here you go. Here's a worksheet." Now this is a this is like so lazy this worksheet. I didn't even bother making it fancy. And I'm going to tell you why in a moment, because I'm. This might be a little bit meta, but I'm teaching you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Right? I'm going to make this easy for you, make yours look better than this. But I just want to show you how lean you can do this without creating anything. So this is essentially a worksheet. Here is your homework assignment. Here's the the template, and then the example. So I know that what you need. So here's the thing. I taught you something. I gave you a quick win. I thought about the action steps that you need to take in order to achieve that quick win or attempt to achieve it. And then how do I document it? Well, here is the document. Okay. So done. Therefore, I can get off the call yesterday knowing that I've given you everything you need. All you need to do is take action. I've literally removed all of your excuses. So how do you document the thing that you are teaching them so that they can get the quick win? All right. Uh, here we go. Samir says, I just planned a 21 day masterclass live. It's super duper low price, approximately a hundred dollars, but it's my very, very first course sell. Woohoo. You've broken the ice, my friend. You're a legend. Well done. So now that you've thought about the action steps that people need to take in order to give them a quick win, and you've thought about how to document it, I'm going to show you how to create a world-class workbook, and then how to use that as your sales and marketing engine, okay? So by now, you should all have the workbook template. And this, if you click on the link, this will actually open up in Canva, which is a, you don't need a paid account. You can do this in a free Canva account. And it will open up and it will look like this. And it is called the Course Creators Workbook. Now, I'm not a designer, kids, all right? So let me just say this. This is de- this deliberately is just plain. You can feel free to do whatever you want and knock yourself out sideways making this thing look better in Canva. That's not my jam, okay? And I'm keeping this course creator's challenge as lean as possible because I want you to understand how much you can achieve by just keeping things super lean. So please don't look at this and go, oh, that doesn't look very good. It's not meant to. It's meant to be, it's meant to be bland so that you can change it. Frankly, I, I would put a workbook out like this and I, like I wouldn't care because no one really cares. It doesn't look awful. Sure, we could tart it up a little bit, but who cares? The point is it needs to be able to get results for your students. So let me just walk you through how it works. This is a front cover. Do whatever, do whatever, whatever you like with it. This is a title of a worksheet. If you want to edit this, you just literally click on that and put, you know, uh, worksheet 101 or whatever you want to call it, right? You can use alignment left here, center here. You can drag that. You can put it in the center if you want. You can do whatever, right? This isn't a lesson on how to use Canva. What I want to do is I want to give you a lesson on how to use the worksheet templates in here. There's over... I don't know, there's quite a few. There's like 40 pages or something of worksheets in here. And I'm going to show you how to build them. Okay, here we go. So each worksheet here is designed to do a very specific thing. So let me just walk you through the very first one here. Uh, This is just where you want them to make a bunch of notes. So yesterday, I could do this. I could go your course UVP, right? And I could left the line, all of that, and open that up. There we go. And then I could go, um, I could put here, brainstorm ideas for your course 
UVP, right? And I would make that left align. And then all I would do here is I would just do that there, line it up, probably line it up there like that. And then here I would go, let me just make sure that is all left align, which it is. Oh no, come on. There we go. And I would open that up and I would say something like this. Using the framework, oh, now you're all going to see how bad I am on the keyboard. Using the framework, read this if you want to blah without blah, right? I'll just go use, here we go. Use the framework, read this if you want to blah without blah, okay? And then they just make a bunch of notes here. That is a worksheet, ladies and gentlemen, okay? That's the idea of this worksheet is just a general brainstorming notes page, okay? Each of these other pages is split up into different types of things. So this here is really good if you want them to do something like we, we use a worksheet like this when we want them to work out what their sweet spot is because we might go, hey, in this section here, write out everything you're skillful at and everything that you're really good at. And then in this column here, write down everything you're passionate about and then draw the lines and work out your sweet spot. Now, I'll give you a, a, a clue. Every one of these pages is basically a duplicate of this page. All I've done here is I've added white lines to separate the columns and the rows. So if I want to move that, for example, right, I could just move that column over there and go, well, I want it to look like that, okay? If that's what you want to do, perfect. I'm just going to put it back there for now. Um, and in fact, let me just let me just undo all these changes so that when people get the template, it is as it should be. There we go. Thank you. And back to square one. Yep. 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 There we go. Cool. Okay. So the next page here <clears throat> is three columns. Oh, here we go. So this is a column on the left. This is where we would normally put a, a template. So for example, this challenge worksheet that I gave you yesterday would be perfect here because what I would do is I would write out here, I would write out the social media post here, and then I would let you brainstorm some ideas and write out some notes here, right? I would write out the email template here, and then you would write it here. This is really good for scripting things. So, hey, here's the script to email Facebook and have your ads unblocked. And then you they write their notes here, okay? Uh, this is just a two column uh, worksheet, exactly the same as this one here, but we've got column headings. So here I could go skills, passion, call it the sweet spot, call it the sweet spot, put your instructions here, skills, passion, and we're done, right? And there's your divider, okay? Uh, just wanna make sure you guys can see this. Yes, you can, excellent, okie dokie. Then we've got just variations of the same, three columns, three columns with headings, four columns, four columns with headings, five columns, five columns with headings. Now, this one here is really good for a weekly planner, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'll give you an even better one in a second. Uh, in fact, do I have a better one? I don't. What I would do is I would grab this. Let me just show you how to turn this into a really good weekly planner where well, we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, AM, PM. All you do is come here, copy this divider, come up here, paste it, look at that. Now we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, AM, PM. That's a great weekly planner if you're in the business of teaching people how to be productive and save time and whatever, okay? That's how easy it is to customize these worksheets, okay? Now we move into the rows. So down to page 10, there are all different column variations. Now we've got rows. So two rows there, two rows with headings, three rows, three rows with headings, blah, 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 blah. The combinations are limitless, okay? Five rows with headings. This would be good if you're doing like business process mapping and you want swim lanes, for example. If anyone knows what that is, right? This is good for doing like, uh, you know, the kind of Stephen Covey, uh, like like with, like the four quadrants of what's important, what's urgent, what's your agenda, what's other people's agenda, right? Anything where you need like four squares. I mean, that's not even even, is it? I mean, that there should be kind of up about 
there, I reckon. There we go. That looks a bit better. Uh, but it's so easy just to move these dividers around to any sort of combination. So here we go to uh, four squares with column headings, four squares with row headings, onwards, 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 okay? So you can customize these until your heart's content. And then what I would do is for every workbook you want to produce, you just use the pages that you want, and then you can just delete the pages you don't want. You can duplicate these pages and move them up or down using the arrows, right? Super easy. And so what my advice would be to come in and redesign this to fit your brand. So my logo's down there and I've got page numbers. There's no way to dynamically add page numbers to Canva, so you just need to keep an eye on that manually, unfortunately. Uh, I would get it designed the way you like it and save that as a template and then use your own template moving forward. So just make all the creative decisions once and then you know uh, duplicate it moving forward. Right, so now we get into some, some cool stuff as well. Here is if you have like quizzes in your course and you just get them to fill in a worksheet, question with a one line answer. So that could be the name of your course, the UVP of your course, the uh, perfect student avatar for your course, right? That would be a worksheet I might put together for this course on teaching you how to create courses, right? Makes sense. There's another one here, fill in the blank, rest of sentence here. So, uh, the, um, you know, uh, running a live what is a good way to pre-sell a course. Challenge would go in there, okay? Uh, running a live challenge is a good way to pre-sell a course. A uh, question with multiple choice, and then they just tick, which uh, is the right answer. And then there's just another question with paragraph answer there just to fill up some blank space. So again, you can just drag and drop these around however you like and uh, customize these until your heart is content. Now let's talk about models. <clears throat> models are a great way to explain something. So for example, if I was teaching the sweet spot, and this is uh, this is a real example out of the Mavericks Club, something we teach in our mastermind, uh, what I would do is I would explain it using a model. So I would say, hey, uh, this circle here represents everything you're good at, and this circle here represents everything you're really passionate about. And in the middle is your sweet spot. So just take some time and think about the things that you're really good at and the things you're really passionate about and where the overlay is. And in fact, uh, you might now want to use the second page in this worksheet to actually write down some of this stuff once you've thought about it. So write down all your skills here and all your passions there and then draw some lines and figure out where your sweet spot is. So the workbook for that module or that lesson would be a heading. It would be called, you know, Mavericks Club, the sweet spot. And then I might have, um, I might have a page of instructions. I, I probably wouldn't. Um, I would just go straight into the model and where I teach them, I'm gonna I'm gonna blow your mind in a minute, right? I promise you, I will. If I haven't already, I'm going to. I would just, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, put this model on the page with some instructions, kind of explain the model. Then I would have a worksheet of two columns where they get to write out their skills and passion. That's the worksheet. Now, check this out, kids. Once you've built your worksheet, I can't believe I'm telling you this. I'm like giving away the farm. This is ridiculous. Once you've built your workbooks, so you've now got a three-page workbook a cover page, the model here of the sweet spot, and the two columns that they fill in. Guess what your videos are in your course? Yes, your videos are where you basically just teach them the theory and show them how to fill in the template. And the template is your workbooks. This is why workbooks are so important. You all, We always develop workbooks first and then teach the workbooks as our course and our course becomes a bunch of videos teaching them the theory in the workbook and we use models a lot to do that and then showing them how to fill in the template okay here's another three circle venn diagram love a good venn diagram uh, where you might go well your sweet spot is the combination of your skills and your passion and what the marketplace needs right thank you to simon kelly for embellishing my original sweet spot model into that uh, this is just another radar model. You can, do, you know, you use this for like, you know, here's the marketplace and here's your perfect customer and here's all these other things, right? Uh, this is a, you know, whatever for, you know, what's important, what's urgent, what's yours, what's theirs, right? Uh, this is just a shape, by the way, with, you guessed it, biters. 
So it's just a circle with dividers. So you can move stuff around and do whatever you like. Uh, this is like, I don't know, it's an oyster. And you can use that to draw whatever model you like. It's a, what is it? It's a shell. It looks like a shell, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, this is a, you know, uh, X, Y axis model. Again, you can see these are just lines on, on Canva that you can move around. Um, this is a, it looks like a, um, the you know left lane ends up ahead so please merge right that's what that looks like this is a process if you're explaining a business process you might use a model like this and this is the schedule for when the recycling bins are collected by the council i'm kidding this is again just a process like hey we would um so in my world if i'm teaching you guys i might say all right so here you put a message out to the market you post your course uvp you get feedback you learn and analyze the results go back to the drawing board and recraft it and then do it again. And you keep going until you find the magic in the middle, right? So I might use that to draw the model. Then I give them a worksheet to make a bunch of notes. That's a workbook. I teach the workbook and the series of those videos becomes my course. Oh, it's genius, isn't it? It's just genius. Um, right. So comments, 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 comments. What if we, <laughs> Amy says, I'm evil and send it to Fiverr to be converted. Excellent, Amy. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yes. Ron Pearson says, any recommendation for converting to fillable PDF? Yes. What Amy said, send it to Fiverr and get it converted. Angie says, Troy Dean, you are a legend. Thank you very much, Angie. I appreciate it. Um, thanks, Jennifer. Yes, it can be output as a typable PDF. Yeah, I think you need to use Acrobat to do something like that. I don't know. I'm not sure. Ben does that for us, but I think you do it in Acrobat, <clears throat> right? Whatever. Um, uh, if there wouldn't have been a five kilometer restriction, I would love to have come to the CBD and hugged you. I'm from Melbourne too. <laughs> awesome. When the restrictions are over, dude, and you're wearing a nuclear suit and a mask, you can come and hug me. Okay. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> All right. Hey, is this helpful? Please. Is this what I what I really want to know is. I really, 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 really want to know is if this is helpful, then please leave a yes in the comments. Drop a yes in the comments if this is helpful. <clears throat> Excuse me. While I have some aqua, Zach says, Zach said, does it teach? Yes, then ship it. Exactly, my friend. Goal is to get people thinking not to handhold through everything, right? That's exactly right, Zach. In fact, here's the kicker. Your workbook should be really useful on its own, like the one I've given you. I basically gave you our workbook for this course. Now, I know it's very meta, but because the course that we're rolling out is all about how to create an online course. It's called the Course Creators Blueprint, and we're running a challenge this week leading up to the course. Then the most valuable thing I could give you is a workbook template so that you can start developing your own workbooks because I know that's the most valuable thing that you're going to need. Not only that it not only does it make it super easy for you to produce a course once you've validated it and once you know what the curriculum is, which we'll talk about more later on in the week, but it also is the most helpful thing you can do for your students. But I also know that's where you're going to get stuck. So I gave you, I've given you our template to produce workbooks fast. So you're not stuck. Just go into Canva and edit the one that I've given you. And there's like 40 different types of pages there, right? So you're only limited by your imagination now. And it's super, super useful. However, it's incomplete because now you're going, okay, but what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And what about this? You've got a bunch of questions. And that's, so come Friday, when we open the doors to the Course Creators Blueprint, I can't believe I'm revealing everything that we're doing here. It's completely meta, but this is what we do. We peel back the kimono and we show you how it works. So come Friday, you'll have all these questions. You will have gotten a bunch of traction, but you'll have all these questions that are unanswered. And that's why you'll enroll in the Course Creators Blueprint to get more access to me and the training and the coaching to help you answer those questions so that you can keep the momentum going. So in answer to your question, Zach, the goal is to get people thinking, right, to teach them some cool stuff, give them some stuff, get them thinking, give them a quick win 
but your content should always raise more questions than it asks. That's why giving people an amazing workbook, you, like you imagine going, you imagine finding your dream course at the best university in the world, if universities were you know, still relevant in 10 years' time, which maybe they will be, I don't know. But if they are, you imagine like going to Harvard and going, well, that's the course that I want to do, and someone saying, well, here you go, here's all the course materials. Here's all the textbooks. Here's all the worksheets. Here's the exams. Here it is. Off you go. Oh, my, wow, that's amazing. Like, thank you. And you went home and you spent all weekend devouring it and you'd be lost, right? You're like, well, I need some help with this. And that's why you go do the course. And that's why people go do your course. A workbook instantly positions you as the authority because clearly you've put the thought and the effort into developing a workbook. So you obviously know your shit, right? You've got this workbook. It instantly positions you as the authority and it gives them something to focus on. Wow, this is amazing, but it's incomplete. They can't really do it on their own. They need your help. And it's probably going to be really good if they have some accountability from a whole bunch of other people going through the same process at the same time, right? So correct, Amy, workbooks for strategy and videos to teach the detail. Yes. <laughs> ben says, I am nothing more than some code in the cloud. That's right. Uh, ben, uh, ben is the one who converts our workbooks into fillable PDFs. Warren says, yes, but I'm struggling to see how I would create these sort of workbooks for teaching people to create websites. I really need to demo the back end more than anything. Fine. So check this out. The most money I've ever spent on learning something technical was, uh, I think I spent about three grand basically learning how to run ads, right? Across all platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, Insta Chat, Snapgram, whatever, I don't know. Whatever platform it was, I learned how to run ads. I learned how to set up like super, super detailed stuff. I learned how to set up custom conversions using like really nerdy, super nerdy stuff. How to integrate with Google Tag Manager, how to run events on our website that so that when people click a button, they get tagged in Facebook ads and we can put them into a remarketing campaign. Super, super detailed, nerdy stuff. 95% of that training were slides on a screen and someone giving me instructions and workbooks that I had to fill in. 5% of that entire training was screen sharing. You know why? Because the screen interface is going to change every week or every month, right? So trust me when I tell you this, if you, if your entire course is screen sharing, you're going to back yourself into a very horrible corner. One, you're going to have to update that course very frequently. They change their platform, whoever it is that you, you're basing your course on and you are kind of screwed. So my advice would be teach fundamentals and a very small percentage of it should be how to execute it on the app, right? So for example, our high ticket sales funnel course is all about how to build a high ticket sales funnel using WordPress and a page builder and some plugins. 80% of that course is the strategy and the scripts and the documentation. And 20% of it is actually well, one sixth of it, 16.66 reoccurring percent is actually how to build the thing in WordPress. Right. So Warren, I hope that answers that question. Um, Yogesh, great question. Should the workbook be given before the course launch? Well, let me ask you a question, Yogesh. Have we launched the Course Creators Blueprint course yet? No. Have I given you the workbook that the course will be based on? Yes. So, there's the answer to your question. You should absolutely give the workbook away before you launch your course. In fact, your workbook is your ultimate lead magnet. So the workbook should be used to generate interest in your course. Now, you just have to make sure that you don't give everything away in the uh, course, sorry, in the workbook. 
because you, you want to leave some unanswered questions, right? Sarah Davenport says, love it. Troy, can you tell us how this fits with the idea of creating a course with your participants? Yes. Great question, Sarah. So you already have in my, in your mind, before you talk to your course participants or before anyone buys your course, you already have an idea of what you need to teach people and what problems they have and what the quick wins are going to be, right? You already have an idea in the back of your mind. So I know that in the course creators blueprint, for example, you guys want to create an online course and there's a whole bunch of places you're going to get stuck. And the workbook is one of them. But there are, that's why we put together the workbook template because it's like the quick win that we can give you. It's super valuable. It's really helpful. Positions us as the authority, but also is kind of incomplete. You need more help with it. And you need more help with how it fits into the overall strategy, which is why you're asking this exact question, right? However, there's also like 8,000 other questions and details that I don't know just yet that you guys have about creating and selling online courses. And I'm going to learn those because you're going to tell me over the next six weeks, as well, the next three months, actually, as we roll through the Course Creators Blueprint, you're going to tell me what those questions are, and I'm going to answer them. Chances are I can answer them right now. I just don't know what they are because I haven't, we haven't spent time together. So think of the workbook as generic, but giving them a quick win. So for example, uh, in your world, Sarah, if you're talking about career development for psychologists, for example, one of the things that you might want to do is just, and the workbook can be super short. It can be like three or four pages. One of the things you can do is walk them through. I'll give you a real example. I'm reading a book at the moment called Living Forward by Michael Hyatt. And um, uh, another guy whose name uh, I, I can't remember, um, they put together this book when Michael hired this guy as a coach to help him work out his life plan. And in the book, they basically teach you how to develop a life plan. And you can go to their website and download their workbook, which is essentially the template on how to write a life plan. And it'll get you so far. There are a certain percentage of people, I'm one of them, who just want access I want it from the horse's mouth and I want to get it done quicker and I want to make sure that I'm doing it right. So if Michael Hyatt has a course for whatever, I don't care, whatever it is, a thousand bucks, 1500 bucks, whatever it is, to make sure that I'm developing my life plan properly and that I've got it done and, and keep to keep me accountable, I'm the guy that will buy the course. Even though I could read the book, look at the template and probably do it myself, I'm going to buy the course, right? So to answer your question, Sarah, your your workbook should be generic and it should be um, enough to get them started. So it might be, hey, if you're a psychologist and you're you know uh, feeling confused or overwhelmed by the choices in front of you and you feel like you could really benefit from having a support network and some accountability and maybe a supervisor or a mentor, here are some of the things that you need to think about. One of the first things you need to think about is basically to write down a, a career plan. Like, what does your career plan look like over the next five years or the next 10 years? Have you thought about that? If not, here's a couple of worksheets to get the process started. And they fill in the career plan and then they're going to have a bunch of questions like, well, how do I reach out to a mentor? How do I find a good group supervision group? Which courses should I take? How do I dial in self-care? How do I keep myself accountable? A whole bunch of questions, which we don't know yet, but at least you've given them something. You've given them a quick win. You've given them some clarity and some focus, right? So use that lead magnet, that workbook as a lead magnet to position yourself as the authority and start a conversation around the topic. Does that make sense? Sarah, let me know if that makes sense. Uh, Angie Neal says, my template is already rebranded. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. Is this what we're giving to people who say I'm in? That's a great question, Alex. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh... And Zach says, that's why they give samples at the grocery store, not the whole item. Yes. All right. Let's talk about what to do with these people who say, I'm in. So um, what I would do, Alex, is th the next part of this really is putting together the offer of what it is you're selling, uh, keeping it generic enough that you don't back yourself into a corner. Sarah Davenport says, yes. Thanks, Troy Dean. Thank you very much, Sarah Davenport. Thanks for playing along. Glad, glad that you're here. Um, Alex asked this question. Is this what we're giving to people who say I'm in? 
what I would do is put, uh, you could give them the, the workbook or you could just put together an offer and the offer is, uh, you know, basically a repeat of what you've said in the first post, right? So the offer will be something like this. Let me just stop sharing my screen, come back here and share this other tab, this one here. I would say something like this. So if someone says I'm in <clears throat> on social media, what you want to do is you want to get them in Messenger straight away. You want to leave them a message in on Facebook and say, hey, Paul, um, check Messenger for the details. I just PM'd you the details. And then ping them in Messenger. And you, the reason you want to do that is because sometimes when you send someone a message in Facebook Messenger and you're not connected on Facebook, you're not friends, it goes to their other folder. It goes to their chat requests folder. So you want to ping them on the original post that you posted. Angie, this one's for you as well the original post that you posted where they said, I'm in, you want to ping them on that, reply on that post and say, hey, just sent you a message in Messenger. And then in Messenger, you want to say something like, hey, Paul, uh, thanks for uh, expressing interest on the post. Uh, just to uh, let you know, I'm looking for a small group of people to work with me over the next blah, 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 who want to achieve blah, blah, blah. So if you're blah, 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 right, um, and you're interested, go here and uh, get on board. And then what I would do is I would just send them to a super, I, like just send them to an email address. And when they email you, email them back and go, hey, give me your details and what's your phone number and have a phone conversation with them and just sign them up, get their credit card details and just sign them up. Or send them to a basic checkout form. If you've already got a checkout form that you can use, if you're using, you know, SAM card or WordPress or whatever, doesn't matter if you've got a basic checkout form that you can send them or you've got a PayPal link, doesn't matter. Some mechanism to get them to buy. Most people make the mistake that they think they have to put together this enormous amount of information to get people to buy a course. If they've said, I'm in, they're in. You just need to reach out to them, reiterate exactly what it is, like what's the what outcome are they going to get? Let them, you might want to say, um, you might want to just say, hey, this is a pilot program. Just to let you know, you're getting, you guys are getting this at a, you know, 50% off what it will normally be when we launch it. Um, uh, because I, I want some testimonials as a result of you going through this. So when we get you some results, I want some testimonials. I could reach out to Angie Neal now and say, hey, Angie, uh, I want some testimonials. I want a testimonial on the UVP exercise, the quick win, and Angie would give me a testimonial, no problem, right? And she's going to get the course creators blueprint at half price because she's going to be in the pilot program because she's going to give me a testimonial because she's in, she's taking action, she's interested. So don't overcomplicate this. Just reach out on a private message and say, hey, Paul, thanks for expressing expressing interest on your post. As I said, we're looking for a small group of people to work with us over the next 90 days who want to blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, so uh, uh, if this is something that you're uh, interested in, just go here and fill in your details or shoot me a phone number and we'll jump on a quick call and happy to answer any questions right? and then just get them on a call, yeah, and answer the questions and take their details over the phone and sign them up, right, and let them know, hey, this starts on, you know, October, where are we, uh, you know, starts on October 19 or whatever. That gives yourself three or four weeks to figure it out and by then you'll be in the program with me and I'll help you figure it out. It's no no big deal, right? It's like that's the easy bit. Teaching the course and rolling this out as a pilot program is not the hard bit. Trust me, that's not the hard bit. The hard bit is getting doing what Angie's done now which is getting people interested, right? And she's already done that. So um does that answer that question Alex? Uh you just if they're in just get them on board, get them to sign up. Yeah. Uh, do you collect all links to documents at the same place in a Facebook page group? Uh, Michael, uh, uh, I'm going to answer more of the technical stuff on Friday. And remember, you do need to stay engaged for the whole week if you want to win an iPad Pro. So come back Friday. I'm going to answer more of the questions about the technical stuff. Um, we, I ju we, So I just use Google Drive to store all of my stuff, and then I'll explain how we roll it out uh, on, on Friday. So I gave the offer in the Word document. Perfect, Samir. Perfect, perfect, perfect. This is an interesting question. Angie says, I'm an Aussie, but should I be selling the course in US dollars? Well, we do because most of our audience are in the US and the US dollar is worth more than Aussie dollars. So we sell everything in US dollars and we have since 2008 when we started out. So we just made that decision back then. But it's entirely up to you. It depends on where your audience are. Yeah. Um, if people see the value in it, they'll pay. So we, we don't, I mean, 
we've we've thought over the years about doing you know local currency so selling to australians in australian dollars selling to and it's just a nightmare it's an admin nightmare uh warren should we wait to see if we get 10 interested before signing anyone up don't really want to teach to just one or two no i wouldn't teach to one or two either uh it depends on the price point and it depends on the objective so one of the first courses i rolled out using this methodology i sold 10 copies for a thousand dollars and that I, I was done i was like i just want to get 10 people through this pilot program for a thousand dollars now i wouldn't do that these days just because our business is different now and i i know that we, we don't need to do that we do it on a much bigger scale um, i wouldn't teach one or two if i was my advice to you would be if you can sell 10 for a thousand dollars that would be a good ten thousand dollars is a good validator right but it's up it depends on what your objective is and and what the goal is yeah but getting paid 10 grand to actually build a, an amazing course is a pretty sweet deal so it just depends on the objective um uh, kelvin would people be freaked out to pay now and not get the actual course till a month or two later nope uh not not in my experience no uh, as long as you, as long as you deliver on your promise it's like people, you know, people put their money down and pre-buy stuff all the time. Like I've got tickets to go and see um, Simple Minds in Melbourne here in December 2021. I bought those tickets before the pandemic happened. I bought those tickets like two years in advance. So people do that all the time. What is a good lead time? That's a great question, Angie. A good lead time is however long you need to be ahead of your students. Right? However long you need to be ahead of your students. And we'll talk more about that on Friday, but you, you've just got to make sure that you're a couple of weeks ahead of your students, okay? Uh, <clears throat> at what step should we use Workbook as sales and marketing engine if we're directly getting them to check out page after I'm in? Well, if they're in, right, and they're, they're, and they're happy to go to a checkout page and buy, then you don't need the Workbook, right? The, I, the workbook, I use the workbook as a lead magnet and as a way to generate interest in the course. Yeah. So I will use the workbook to generate interest and then, you know, maybe as an opt in for a lead magnet or give it away in a Facebook group and then email or message the people who have the workbook and let them know what's coming. So you don't need to use the workbook as a sales and marketing uh, engine. If you've already got people saying, I'm in, they're in, right? Short. So, we, the, the big mistake a lot of people make is when someone says, I'm in, and they go, okay, cool. So let me uh, give you this workbook, and then let me tell you how it's all going to work, and then let me walk you through what's going to happen. Here are all the Zoom links that we're going to run over the next 90 days, and then what we're going to do is set up a Facebook group over here, and, and then we'll SMS you, and the person's like, hang on a second. Now I'm overwhelmed, right, and I'm, uh, I'm confused. If they're in, they're in. Just – Tell them, right, this is what's happening. It rolls out on the 19th of October, um, uh, you know, bang. And I can tell you this categorically. I've done this before and I've sold five or six copies. This is after the catastrophe of Fuel HQ. I've done this before. I've sold five or six copies and we just haven't got there. It's like I'm not doing this for five people and I just refund them. I'm like I'm really sorry for whatever reason. We couldn't make it work. You can – use the money that you've given me on something else or I can just give you the money back, yeah? Be prepared to refund and walk away if it, if it doesn't make sense, okay? It's a, a, amazing how much you will learn in that experience, right? Get out of the gym and into the ring. Like it's all academic until you get punched in the face a hundred times and then you go, okay, I've learned so much about my audience and my offer and my messaging now and hopefully we don't make the same mistake twice. Sean Michael Smith, we got one person to say I'm in. Unreal. That's one more than zero. What have we learned? Uh, Kush Patel says, how to generate more interest as I just got one person interested. Yep. So where's the audience? Where is your audience, Kush? Where is your audience? We're going to talk, I'm going to talk more about, I mean, I'm going to show you how to build an audience in the Course Creators Blueprint. The, the best time to start building an audience was yesterday. The second best time is today. And let me say this. I believe right now the opportunity is to build an audience through a free Facebook group. Facebook group usage is off the charts. There's a whole strategy around running a successful Facebook group. In fact, we've just hired someone to come on in-house and help us manage our free Facebook group. 
because there's six and a half thousand people in there and I don't have the bandwidth to manage it all. So we've now got a Facebook group strategist on board to help us grow that Facebook group. I think Facebook groups, if I had to choose right now between a Facebook group and an email audience, I would choose a Facebook group. Sheila says, I think Dave Foy was making the course and rolling out his course modules weekly after it opened. Not a single person complained. The value was great. I'll put money on the fact that he was doing that because he and I talked about it in London uh, in 2019. <clears throat> so I, I absolutely put money on the fact that he was doing that. Robert Mecklen, yes, says shut up and take their money. Exactly. <laughs> yes, Facebook groups. Um, Right. So uh, any other questions? Tomorrow, I do just want to uh, remind you, we're giving away an iPad Pro. I'm, I'm basically bribing you, right, to keep turning up. We're giving away an iPad Pro uh, on Friday with an Apple Pencil. You have to be here every day. You have to be engaged. You have to be taking action. You have to be here on Friday to accept the prize. Otherwise, it goes to someone else. And... Uh, this is a bribe to keep you engaged and to keep you motivated, right? Amy Hall says, what about a LinkedIn group? Well, sure. I mean, if that works, totally. I mean, I just Facebook groups for me are, you know, um, Facebook groups for me are just where it's at because they're, they're ridiculously engaging because Facebook is like crack. It has that, it just has the, the engagement psychology built into it. I'm convinced it's engineered by the same people that make poker machines, right? And it's, you know, awful if you uh, not uh, if you don't have a strong constitution and you can't get yourself out of it, but it's great for marketers like us because it's they're a captive audience. Ron says, so these I'm in responses are just to the loosely defined offer in the email message and before the free webinar has demoed. Sure, um, I don't do a free webinar. Uh, I'm doing a challenge on Facebook, um, but whatever. That takes a lot of trust. Won't most wait until last webinar and official offer. Well, here's the thing. Um I'm not, we're not doing a traditional launch. So we're not doing like the first webinar and then 8,000 webinars and then 48 training videos and then 1 million emails and then another webinar. I'm not doing that because it's too much work and you don't need to. So the, the, the point that we're trying to make here is Ron is, you know, what, and we'll talk about this more in the course creators blueprint, but what, what's the goal of this course? Like if your goal is to, let's say your goal was to make $10,000 to create your course right? That's, that's part of the blueprint that we follow, that we used to follow is to get paid 10 grand to make the course. Now, as I said, our business is very different. Our goals are a lot higher and we're operating at a different level. But when I first started doing this back in 2012, the goal was, I wonder if I can get paid 10 grand to build a course. And at the time it was like, well, if I do that, I could basically say no to websites for a month, right? Because so I don't need the money and I could just focus on building the course with the people who have paid me. So, that's that's kind of the goal. Like if your goal is to do a multiple six-figure launch here, Ron, then sure, maybe this approach won't work, but uh, maybe it will. It just depends on your audience and, and how big your audience is and how much they trust you and how much reach you have and how much authority you have. Uh, if someone says, I'm in to that response, I would just hit them straight up and go, hey, dude, cool. You said you're in. Let's go. Like If they're like, well, well hang on a second, I need more information, go, cool, what are your questions? And then just let them ask questions. Don't, you don't need to pitch someone who says, I'm in. You just need to answer questions. If, they, if they're in, you just need to answer questions. You don't need to pitch them because they're already in. You'll oversell them. You'll confuse them. And, you know, they're out. Tina Hughes, get out of town. Woohoo! I got 41 signups overnight. I want to see screenshots, Tina. Go into the Digital Mavericks Facebook group, please. I want to see screenshots. Stop, Jennifer Franklin. No. Okay, I've got to share this. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I'm in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group now. Ooh, things are getting hairy now. Here we go. Watch this. <clears throat> Jennifer Franklin says, it seems like I've been waiting a lifetime for Troy to launch this course. What course? I don't know what you're talking about. In the meantime, I've got 170 people who have signed to my course launch VIP wait list. Let's go. Now, how long have you been collecting these leads? 
That's my question, Jennifer. That's unbelievable. Right? And Tina Hughes, I would like to see screenshots of your signups, please. Right? Not that I don't believe you. I just want to see the screenshots because I want to use you as a case study at some point. Uh, Kelvin, I mentioned yesterday that the course should be around $197. I don't know why I said that. I think I said that maybe to someone who's just starting out, doesn't have an audience or or um, not really sure. Um, the price point is whatever the price point needs. To, so here's the thing about pricing. There's two rules with pricing. Actually, there's only one. The one rule with pricing is it's got to be profitable for you as a business owner, period. That's it. That's the only rule with pricing. The second rule of pricing is you've got to be able to demonstrate enough value to justify the price, right? So that's really what it comes down to. So if you were teaching people how to scrapbook, I can't imagine paying any more than a couple of hundred dollars to learn how to scrapbook because, I mean, I just don't know what the return on investment is there, right? If you're teaching me how to train my dog not to piss in the house, well, I might pay 500 bucks for that because every time the dog does piss in the house, I've got to pay some guy to come and chem dry the carpets and that's a couple of hundred bucks a pop and the dog's getting older and is pissing in the house more and more. So, you know, um, but if you, <laughs> you know, if you're teaching, um, because my original course was, no, my original course was, uh, my original course, the first course we ever sold was 497. Uh, then it went to 997. The first course I sold using this methodology was 997 uh, back in 2015, I think it was, 2016. Uh, the first course we sold doing a big launch was 497. Um, that just, I mean, it just doesn't make sense for us to sell courses cheaper than that. But it depends on your audience and it depends on your, uh, you know, your your reach and what it is you're teaching. So, I mean, if, if Angie Neal's teaching designers how to do SEO and they can add that to their business as a service. So they design something for a client and they're like, all right, cool. We've now got to, you know, Oh, sorry, Robert. Yes. Well, that, that the first course we launched in 2012 fuel HQ was 197 and it completely failed. Right. Maybe it was too cheap. Maybe that's why it failed. I don't know. But interestingly, three and a half years later, we launched a course at 497. It was a massive, massive hit. So, uh, Think about the ROI. Angie Neal is 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 uh, producing a course for designers to learn how to do SEO. I mean, that's that they sell SEO to one client, or they do SEO on their own website and get one client from SEO, and it's worth how much is that worth? Five grand, ten grand for a client. So your price point needs to be profitable for you to deliver, but it also needs to be you need to be able to demonstrate the value in that, right? So, and also if you're working with cheaper price points, you just got to do more volume. I mean, I, if you're selling a course for $200 and you sell 10 copies, I don't know. I mean, I just don't, can't imagine putting any effort into that at all for a couple of thousand dollars. I mean, what's the point, you know? And and I will say this, unless you're selling scrapbooking, which is weird, but, you know, if you're selling something for 197 chances are you can sell it for 497 You just need to communicate the value better, okay, which is a whole other conversation. Um. Angie says, rule three, it ends in a seven. All pricing ends in a seven. Everybody knows that. Seven's a magic number. Yeah. Alex Baccarella says, is 947 a good first course price and would 497 be a good early access price? 997, 947 is weird. 997 is a good course price and 497 is a good early access price. That's funny you mentioned that. Um, all right. I need to bounce out of here. You guys are amazing. Tomorrow, what's coming up tomorrow? Yay, Dana Molstaff is going to be here from Boss Mom. She's going to reveal her course creation secrets and, uh, and, and how she has built an amazing business and an amazing lifestyle just by turning up and teaching her tribe stuff that she knows and sharing her expertise. That's going to be epic. And then, of course, the following day, our good friend Dave Foy is going to be here all the way from UK. He's sitting up till midnight to join us, and we're going to unpack his brain and figure out how he's turned his technical expertise into online courses or a, a range of online courses actually and built an amazing lifestyle for himself and also how he does that when you could argue that a lot of what he teaches can just be found on YouTube. So I want to um, talk about that as well. Here we go. Here's some more detail from Jennifer Franklin. I started collecting the VIP waitlist emails a few months ago. I've taken another course on how to create an online course. However, I've learned so much and been able to take action every time I buy one of your courses that I know if I follow your process, I shall succeed. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, that right there is proof 
of one of the huge benefits of creating and selling online courses. Jennifer Franklin is a student of our online courses, probably more than one of our online courses, and is lining up for this next course because she knows that if she takes action, every time she buys one of our courses, if she follows the process, it will succeed. So this is the gratitude you get from your course students. So Jennifer, thank you so much for sharing that. And I look forward to helping you launch your course to those 170 people who are on your list. All right. Uh, remember, take action, turn up, keep posting, keep emailing and keep posting. And uh, because we are going to give away that iPad and stay engaged. Tomorrow, same time, same bat channel. If you if you have any questions, um, hit the uh, support channels, support at wpelevation.com. If you need the workbook, if you need access to any of the templates we've shared, otherwise just get into the Digital Mavericks Facebook group and we're sharing everything in there. So Hope that helps. Look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.